This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. But now, oh Adam, because you fell, you are under my rule, and I am king over you. Because you have obeyed me and have transgressed against your God, neither will there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised you by your God. Again, Satan said, because we do not know the day agreed on with you by your God, nor the hour in which you shall be delivered, for that reason we will multiply war and murder on you and your descendants after you. This is our will and our good pleasure, that we may not leave one of the sons of men to inherit our orders in heaven. And as for our home, O Adam, is in burning fire, and we will not stop our evil doing, no, not one day, nor one hour. The first book of Adam and Eve, chapter 57, verses 7 through 10. This evening, I'm going to, you know, again, talk about the this lost generation, but I want to cover specifically first before we go into that, the reasons for why we can trust and why we should look to the book of Enoch for better understanding as to what we are contending with even in this day and this age. Because Enoch wrote about in in the first chapter of his book that he specifically knew that what he was writing in that time in our ancient past as witness and testimony for what the fallen angels, the sons of God, had their interdiction into the affairs of humanity, that his eyewitness and his being taken to be a witness against them, that his work, his words, and the visions which he shared, that they would be for a remote and distant generation, those that would be alive at the end of days that would see the fulfillment of all things. And we are that generation. Without a doubt, we are the fig tree generation in that Christ spoke about when the apostles asked him specifically what would be the signs of his return and the coming of the end of the age, that to recognize, to know ye the parable of the fig tree and how the parable of the fig tree is connected to the regathering of the house of Israel and its sudden, uh, how it was suddenly brought back into being as a nation and given the same city, Jerusalem, as its capital. And so in twice in the New Testament, in Second Peter, and also in the book of Jude, which Jude was the half-brother of Christ. He was one of the, the children that were born unto Joseph from previous marriage. And he said and quoted from the book of Enoch, which all of the patriarchs, if you look at the ancient testimonies, and I just released a book called The Ancient Prophecies of Christ, which specify and bring forth all those ancient accounts. They knew of the book of Enoch and had read and studied it in great detail and knew from it the prophecies of not only his coming, but that their children would fall away and that as Israel, they would become corrupted and take on pagan practices and assume abominable ways. 
So anyways, I'll share a couple of these passages um, and talk a little bit more about the Book of Enoch over this and the next segment. And then we'll go into some of the specifics of just this lost generation, which it's really sad to see um, how so many are addicted to heroin and things like fentanyl and how they're neglecting their children and and really giving themselves over to to death and persecution just in order to maintain that lifestyle which is it's it's total insanity why anybody would want to live that way is just beyond me but we'll go into that in a short bit this says this i will therefore put you in remembrance though you once knew this how that the lord having saved the people out of the land of egypt afterward destroyed them that believed not and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day even as sodom and gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh despise dominion and speak evil of dignities raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever and enoch also the seventh from adam prophesied of these saying behold the lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them and so i made mention and welcome everybody in the chat room i appreciate you taking the time to listen but i had made mention about how in the Ah, while we're at break. All right, we'll pick it up on the other side. everybody i want to just give a shout out to uh carol and bob and rose um for whom i'm doing this specifically 
And for those that don't know, um, they have contacted me to assist on the creation of a uh, a movie based on, on the life of Enoch and also in speaking about the fallen watchers and their abandoning the, you know, as far as their place of habitation. And a lot of the passages and scriptures which I bring up are little known um, and a lot of the ancient manuscripts which I've read which elaborate on the story are are not considered or read or even uh, known about by mainstream churchianity. And so with regard to the authenticity of the Book of Enoch, we know without a doubt that it is the most widely uh, scripted and covered book of the Dead Sea Scrolls and those ancient manuscripts which date back to the time before the creation of the church and to the coming of Christ in the you know, third year 3 BC. And that um, the book of Enoch has been dated back to the third century BC and that it has a portion of, within its text prophecies of the coming of Christ as the elect one, the son of man. And that, in my opinion, this is one of the reasons why those that are opposed to truth and that have been fighting against, and I'm specifically talking about the seed of Cain uh, in their connection to the Pharisees, that they have been trying to hide knowledge and to keep humanity from knowing of God being incarnate into flesh, that he would come and assume mortality in order to redeem us. And that the purpose of such was tied to not only the fall of Adam and Eve, but also to the war in heaven. And so I'm going to continue with now from, I had just read from the book of Jude about how he says um, that and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute his judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly, ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which God, ungodly sinners have spoken against him. That Jude again was specifically quoting from the book of Enoch. And in chapter 1, we have this almost verbatim, this exact um, passage. Beginning with verse 2, it says in chapter 1, From then I heard all things and understood what I saw, that which will not take place in this generation, but in a generation which is to succeed at a distant period on account of the elect. Upon their account, I spoke and conversed with him who will go forth from his habitation, the holy and mighty one, the God of the world, who will hereafter tread upon Mount Sinai, appear with his host, and be manifested in the strength of his power from heaven. All shall be afraid, and the watchers be terrified. Great fear and trembling shall seize them, even to the ends of the earth. The lofty mountains shall be troubled and the exalted hills depressed, melting like a honeycomb in the flame. This is spoken about in Isaiah chapter 40. The earth shall be immersed in all things which are in it, perish while judgment shall come upon all, even upon all the righteous. But to them shall he give peace he shall preserve the elect and towards them exercise clemency. Then shall all belong to God, be happy and blessed, and the splendor of the Godhead shall illuminate them. And so, oh, wait. I did not. Oh, it, it's the next verse in chapter two. It says, 
Behold, he comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon them and destroy the wicked and reprove all the carnal for everything which the sinful and ungodly have done and committed against him. And so for those that know and have studied the book of Enoch, you know that that verse that Jude is exactly quoting from right there in cha uh, chapter 2, and that he specifically makes mention of, and that Peter also alludes to the, um, the angels that were reserved in everlasting darkness and how they abandoned their place of habitation. So I'll read that. And it makes... You know, again, this is main mention of in the New Testament that twice there we see connection to the book of Enoch and also that Christ alludes to the book of Enoch directly himself. And I'll get to that next, but it says this. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and deliver just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unloft deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. And so, you know, this is Second Peter chapter 2, verses 5. Five through nine. And so Peter is also alluding to the book of Enoch because when you read the book of Enoch, you know that what is greatly elaborated within its account is what is veiled slightly and made mention of in Genesis 6 with the sons of God mating with the daughters of man, creating a race of giants known as the men of renown, and that this race of giants, uh, that there were giants on the earth before and after the flood, and that it was because of their presence and because of their voracious appetites and their sin against humanity and against the uh, creatures of this world, the plants and the creatures of this world, that they started to cannibalize humanity to eat the flesh and to drink the blood that that was the reason why the most high brought <clears throat> excuse me specifically flood upon the world and that in second baruch it makes mention that or third baruch actually the greek version that it makes mention of 409,000 giants being killed by the flood of Noah's day. And again, for those that do not believe in the authenticity of the book of Enoch, I will share, you know, one other passage from the New Testament, which confirms like the, the, of uh, the apostles who also, uh, and the patriarchs who also alluded to it and quoted from it, but that Christ himself makes mention of and gives credence to and alludes to the book of Enoch, where in Matthew chapter 23, verse 20, where he says, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. And whereas many people use this passage to negate the possibility that the angels fornicated with humanity and created this race of giants, um, once you understand the context of that particular verse and what Christ was alluding to, 
it actually confirms the opposite. It makes mention of and speaks about directly that they were not supposed to take wives because being immortal and spiritual beings, they it's only the children of humanity that procreate with the opposite sex to propagate the the race of humanity and that they bring forth children in such manner. But these angels were never supposed to act in such manner because they, you know, they do not need to propagate their races. Being immortal beings, they do not have children in such manner, but yet because they committed this unholy act, they brought forth this unholy race who became the adversaries of humanity. And they decimated, destroyed the harmony of the world that the Most High had created and set in order previous to the flood of Noah's day. And I'll confirm this by reading this passage. From the book of Enoch, chapter 15. Then addressing me, he spoke and said, Here, neither be afraid, O righteous Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, approach hither and hear my voice. Go say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent you to pray for them, you ought to pray for men and not men for you. Wherefore have you forsaken the lofty and holy heaven, which endures forever, and have lain with women, have defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, have taken to yourselves wives, have acted like the sons of the earth, and have begotten an impious offspring. You, being spiritual, holy, and possessing a life which is eternal, have polluted yourselves with women, have begotten in carnal blood, have lusted in the blood of men, and have done as those who are flesh and blood do. These, however, die and perish. Therefore have I given to them wives, that they might cohabit with them, that sons might be born of them, and that this might be transacted upon earth. But you from the beginning were made spiritual, possessing a life which is eternal and not subject to death forever. Therefore, I made not wise for you because being spiritual, your dwelling is in heaven. And now the giants who have been born of spirit and of flesh shall be called upon earth evil spirits and on earth shall be their habitation. Evil spirits shall proceed from their flesh because they were created from above. From the holy watchers was their beginning and primary foundation. Evil spirits shall be, they be upon the earth, and the spirits of the wicked shall they be called. The habitation of the spirits of heaven shall be in heaven, but upon earth shall be the habitation of terrestrial spirits who are born on earth. The spirits of the giants shall be called like clouds, Nephilim, which shall oppress, corrupt, fall, content, and bruise upon earth. They shall cause lamentation. No food shall they eat, and they shall be thirsty. They shall be concealed, and shall rise up against the sons of men, and against women, for they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction. That's the book of Enoch, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. And so you see that Christ was alluding to the fact that they left their place of habitation, as mentioned by Jude and Peter, and that they came down to the earth and that they took wives of all which they chose. And, you know, again, a lot of people ask, well, being spiritual beings, how was it possible that they could mate with the daughters of, specifically, it was the daughters of Cain? And I'll confirm this. So let's revisit Genesis 6, which is the passage that in the Bible is connected to this particular occurrence. But if you read quickly over it and you don't understand what it's saying, it will just not pique your interest. But for those that really 
examine the context of these passages, it's absolutely mind blowing what is being alluded to here. And it's only by studying the book of Enoch and some of the extra biblical texts that one can get a greater understanding on what is being truly conveyed within these passages. And so, Genesis 6, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Genesis 6, 1 through 6. Okay, and so, again, you see these same stories in many books of the Bible, or in even extra-biblical texts. Um, for instance, the book of Jubilees has the same story. And it came to pass when the children of men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the angels of God saw them on a certain year of this Jubilee, that they were beautiful to look upon, and they took themselves wives of all whom they chose, and they bare unto them sons, and they were giants." And lawlessness increased on the earth, and all flesh corrupted its way, alike men and cattle and beasts and birds and everything that walks on the earth. All of them corrupted their ways and their orders, and they began to devour each other, and lawlessness increased on the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of all men was thus evil continually." And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted its orders. And all that were upon the earth had wrought all manner of evil before his eyes. The book of Jubilees, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And so we see that specific, it was the angels of God, the sons of God, not the sons of Seth. And then if it were, you know, the sons of Seth mating with the daughters of Cain, how is it that giants came about from such cohabitation? It doesn't make sense, especially considering that the giants are a completely different race within the scriptures. They have six fingers, six toes, double sets of teeth because of their larger proportion and their larger stature. And so for those that believe in that particular premise, it's absolutely ludicrous. And so we'll look at the same story from the book of Enoch. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied uh, in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wise from among the children of men and beget us children. And Semyaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and bind ourselves by mutual imprecations to abandon this plan, but to do this thing not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. And then swore they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in awe, 200 who descended in the days of Yared on the summit of Mount Ermon 
and they called it Mount Ermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And these are all the names of their leaders, Semyaza, their leader, Arekabia, Ramiel, Kokobiel, Tamiel, Ramiel, Daniel, Ezekiel, Barakal, Asasel, Armados, Batarel, Ananel, Zakiel, Samsakopiel, Satariel, Turiel, Homiel, Sariel, and these are their chiefs of tens. The Book of Enoch, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. And so you see, without a doubt, that it is the angels of God who had lusted after, and as I said, the daughters of Cain, and that it is specific to them, uh, as is revealed by other books and other texts, which I'll read just three more passages to give you further insight. Because these particular passages that I'm going to read from actually speak about how it was that they were able to mate with the daughters of Cain. If you read the Kebra Nagas, K-E-B-R-A-N-A-G-A-S-T, chapter 100, concerning the fall of the angels, you'll see that they basically tattletale, the angels tattletale on Adam, and they talk about how he had fallen away, give, being given only one command that he transgressed that command, and because of that was going to be cast out of paradise. Well, Christ, the word of the Lord, in speaking up for Adam, he says to the angels that Adam was made of four elements, that he's also of the dust of the ground, but that if you had been put into position such as Adam, that you would have fell away even greater and that you would have caused even greater sin. And they challenge him. They say to Christ, no way, we would never fall away. We would never sin against you. And so they challenge him. They say, okay, put us into the flesh. Let us descend from this place of habitation. We'll go down to the earth and we'll teach humanity about where they had fallen from and why it is that they should worship you as sovereign Lord. And so Christ tells them, okay, but if you do this thing and you fall away, then you're going to have heavy consequences come upon you. And yet they said, okay, well, put us in the flesh. We'll, we'll, we'll hold our ground. We'll, we'll stand true to our word. And so you know, they, they dissent. And here's what it says in the Kebra Nagas. And they were content to leave the height of heaven, and they came down to earth to the folly of the dancing of the children of Cain with all their work of the artisan which they had made in the folly of their fornication, and to their singings which they accompanied with the tambourine and the flutes and the pipes, and much shouting and loud cries of joy and noisy songs. And their daughters were there, and they enjoyed the orgies without shame, for they scented themselves for the men who pleased them, and they lost the balance in their minds. And the men, the angels, did not restrain themselves for a moment, but they took to wife from among the women, those whom they had chosen, and committed sin with them. And straightway God was wroth with them, and he bound them in the terror of Sheol, until the day of redemption. The word of God conquered who had fashioned Adam in his likeness, or from and those who had reviled and made a laughingstock of Adam were conquered, and the daughters of Cain, with whom the angels had companied, conceived, but they were unable to bring forth their children, and they died. And of the children who were in their wombs, some died, some came forth, having split open the bellies of their fingers. All right, we'll be right back. I'll finish this up. All right, welcome back, everybody, for second hour. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Secrets Revealed here on Truth Frequency Radio. And I've been speaking about and covering the authenticity of the Book of Enoch and how it has been quoted and alluded to by 
not only the prophets, but Christ himself, and that he was speaking about um, how it is that the angels abandoned their first estate. And what a lot of people don't know about the backstory of Genesis 6 is that it was the angels that testing him, challenging him, as the word of the Lord, as it says in the Kevin Nagas, which I do recommend people read that chapter 100. It's very detailed, and the two passages that I read here are just a very small segment of the fullness of its account. But the, you know, the passages that I'm reading, even they elaborate in greater detail on what occurred in Genesis 6 and how it was that being placed into flesh bodies, that they were given male bodies, that they were able to copulate with the daughters of Cain. And that coming down, they saw them basically gathered together in, in an orgy. They were having a celebrating a fertility festival, and they were involved in, you know, all kind of abomination and which caused them to fall away. They lost their minds being placed in the flesh form. They began to lust immediately and then decided to, um, to fornicate with them. And so I'll read that last passage again. And the daughters of Cain with whom the angels had company conceived, but were unable to bring forth their children and they died. And of the children who were in their womb, some died and some came forth, having split open the bellies of their mothers, and they came forth by their navels. And when they were grown up and reached man's estate, they became giants whose height reached unto the clouds. All right, I'm going to share two other passages which confirm this, and then we'll go into with recognition of the you know, the signs of the seasons, the end of days, and the lost generation. And so, from the Perk de Rabbi Eliezer, it says, The generation of Cain went about stark naked, men and women, just like the beasts, and they defiled themselves with all kinds of immorality. A man with his mother of his daughter and of, or the wife of his brother or the wife of his neighbor, in public and in the streets with evil inclination, which is in the thought of their heart. As it is said, and the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And the angels who fell from their holy place in heaven saw the daughters of the generations of Cain walking about naked, with their eyes painted like harlots, and they went astray after them and took wives from amongst them. As it is said, and the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took wives of all which they chose. And again, that's the perk de Rabbi Eliezer. One final passage is from the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs. From Reuben's testimony, he says this, For thus they allured the watchers who were before the flood. For as these continually beheld them, they lusted after them, and they conceived the act in their mind, for they changed themselves into the shape of men and appeared to them when they were with their husbands. And the women lusting in their minds after their forms gave birth to giants. For the watchers appeared as to them as reaching even unto the heavens. And so, you know, again, those few, which there are so much more, but I wanted to share those specific passages um, to confirm not only uh, the authenticity of the Book of Enoch, but also to elaborate upon 
the context of Genesis 6 and how it is connected to what Christ alluded to with regard to the book of Enoch, that his connections to, um, you know, that the angels are not given in marriage, that that was all a, a direct passage in reference to the book of Enoch. And so, and I'll share this one final verse. It's the reaction of the angels when there is, when the punishment is brought upon the watchers for having lusted after the daughters of Cain and creating a race of giants. It says, when the punishment went down, on that day, Michael answered Raphael and said, the power of the spirit transports and makes me to tremble because of the severity of the judgment of the secrets, the judgment of the angels. Who can endure the severe judgment which has been executed and before which they melt away? And Michael answered again and said to Raphael, who is he whose heart is not softened concerning it and whose reins are not troubled by this word of judgment that has gone forth upon them because of those who have thus led them out. And it came to pass when he stood before the Lord of spirits, Michael said thus to Raphael, I will not take their part under the eye of the Lord, for the Lord of spirits has been angry with them because they do as if they were the Lord. Therefore, all that is hidden shall come upon them ever, forever and ever. For neither angel nor man shall have his portion in it, but alone they have received their judgment forever and ever. The book of Enoch, chapter 68, verses 2 through 5. And so, you know, this was the first time that any creation of the Most High God, besides, you know, the fallen angels that rebelled against him and that were cast out of the heavens on the second day, that the watchers were sentenced to death, to annihilation, and to being um, carried away into the darkness, reserved in the darkness of hell, and placed in the deepest levels of Tartarus, to be bound unto the great and terrible day of the Lord, when judgment will be brought upon and executed upon all angels and humanity. And so, you know, they were even shocked that here, a spiritual being, a angelic being created by the Most High God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that not only would they have, you know, judgment placed upon them and lose their immortality, but they're going to be annihilated in the second death. They're going to be destroyed as if they had never been before, which that's quite amazing when you really think about it that you know the sin of the flesh the the lust of carnality that the same thing that caused Adam and Eve to be tempted and to fall and to be placed under the authority of death that that also caused all these angels to give up their their immortality, their everlasting life. I mean, that's just, that's pretty heavy. And so that is for my friends, Carolyn and Bob and Rose and others that are interested in uh, why it is that I believe the Book of Enoch is absolutely authentic but not only authentic, but prophetic. 
And I don't mean just with the messianic prophecies of the coming of Christ and the explanation on what occurred during Genesis 6 with the fallen angels and uh, those who descended from the heavens during the time of Yared, which was Enoch's father, but that also contained within it is the book on the courses of the heavenly luminaries, the true accounting of the cosmology. And, you know, how it is that the luminaries, the sun and the stars, move above the face of the earth. As I detailed in my ninth book, The Flat Earth as Key to Decrypt the Book of Enoch. And so, 